All the scientists today, boys and girls, they come from the middle class. They come up with all, they make our lives better. They come up with all the inventions, all the things that make our lives uh, easier, okay? All the, they come up with the knowledge that is necessary for us to understand everything around us, okay? It's not the elite, that, it's not the, the, the capitalist class. They hire scientists, they control the scientists in their uh, uh, companies, but they don't come up with uh, uh, anything. Hardly any, uh, any scientists come from an elite class. In the past, if you're going back to slave times, you, you're, most of your scientists came from this elite class. Today, no, that's past. Not saying we're gonna go back to slavery, of course not, okay? But we're looking at this group, they're, 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 not, they're not really contributing, they're contributing way less as far as humanity. Okay, this is, this is all workers, uh, whether they're middle class workers or upper middle class workers or working class workers, uh, they're the ones uh, that, are, that have come up, you know, they're the scientists. They're the ones who do the work. They're the ones that come up with inventions that make our lives better. Okay, now let's move on to societies open to cultural variation. Yeah, in the future, I cannot, we're going to be even more open to cultural variation. Because when you've got different types of ideas floating around, people share different ideas, they start synthesizing them, and that comes into making of new ideas. Okay, more intelligent. For instance, if you look at, you know, which societies are more developed, they're the ones that have more cultural diversity, more cultural variation, because there are more different ideas shared. Societies where they're, they're kind of stagnant as far as development, everybody's the same, maybe all the same religion. There's no culture, there's no sharing of different ideas. And you can see that society is stagnant. Okay, so we're even talking about a future society way, way better than the capitalism that exists in the United States or Western Europe is open to more cultural variation. The society accepts differing outlooks and will grant the unfamiliar a chance. That'll be in the economic democracy, even more so. This is, and these are all things that encourage creative genius. The more a society does these things that I'm listing, the more geniuses you have. No question about it, you have more geniuses in a capitalist society uh, that, ha that doesn't have a dictatorship than, uh, you know, than a peasant society or a slave society. It's, it's not even close, there's no argument there. But we could have a society even more geniuses can develop in an economic democratic one where people are given more and more opportunities. And the knowledge is knowledge for knowledge's sake is taught in the schools. And that's the slogan throughout the whole society, knowledge for knowledge's sake. The society encourage, encourages creative people to intermingle with each other, share more and more creative ideas. The society makes available encouragement and rewards for originators. Yeah, in our society, Somebody, uh, let's put it this way, someone comes up with uh, uh, some medicine, okay, the person who, who comes up with it gets paid, but the person who makes the big money is the one who owns the, who owns the factory. And the person did nothing, they're just, you know, they're just, uh, they just own the factory, they're the, the major stockholder, they're just collecting the money. The guy, no question, the guy's not poor, the scientist, Okay, but that person is not making nowhere near the money than the, the capitalist. The capitalist didn't come up with the medicine. That doesn't even make any sense. Why is that person rewarded? And there's many ways of rewarding people. I'll give you an example of what I mean. I bet you kids, all you boys and girls out there, you know who Al Capone is. This, group, this gangster. Everybody knows who he is. Okay, you can say, what's your point? How many of you know who... Uh, Johannes Salk is. Think about it. By the way, boys and girls, Johannes Salk, he was the one who came up with the polio vaccine. There's the cure for polio. How come way, way, way more people knew who Al Capone is? They don't even know Johannes Salk. Johannes Salk is the hero. Al Capone is a gangster, a criminal, a lumpen proletariat, a leech to society. He was a murderer. And if you look at movies, he's brought out as a hero. I, I still haven't seen a movie on Johannes Salk. Think about it. Polio. You know how many people died from polio? He came up with the vaccine. That doesn't make sense. Our, uh, the, the mark, it's more marketable to sell Al Capone and hope you want to grow up to be a cool gangster. 
That's a contradiction, cool and gangster. The two don't go together. Gangster is a criminal, the low life. Okay, a matter of fact, you know, uh, you know who's similar to a gangster? That's why they're, they're promoted so highly as a capitalist. If you look at their behavior, they, 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 destroy, they, they fight each other like gangsters fight each other. Capitalists will try to get another capitalist to go out of business. Okay, gangsters have gang wars. Capitalists have big wars. They're similar. They're, you know, just a gangster is a less educated. They don't dress as good. They're less knowledgeable than a, than a capitalist. But a gangster is, is a capitalist. They're no different. They're no different when you look at that. Matter of fact, if you look at the history of your big time families, uh, uh, old money families, and maybe in the future we're going to look at that, they were all, they, they started out as gangsters. They were known as robber barons, but they were gangsters. People were murdered, people were uh, um, um, uh, hurt, got hurt. There was a lot of uh, different kinds of form of loan sharking. Very interesting. Okay. They called it banking, but it was loan sharking. Okay. It's amazing. And we'll probably talk about that in a future episode, a uh, robber barons episode. That's going to be a long ways off because we've got a lot of things to talk about before we get there. But that's something to realize. Look, at, look what's encouraged. Gangsters. Look how many gangster movies come out every year. Look how many gangster movies win Academy Awards. Where's Johannes Salk in all this? And so many other great... Uh, scientists. Okay, this is something to think about. Why isn't that not encouraged? And is society the conclusion? It is society that permits or not permits creative genius to build up. Under capitalism, it's limited. We need uh, economic democracy to encourage more creative genius. Many people are potentially innovative geniuses, but actual geniuses are not arbitrarily dispersed in the world because some societies support them while others suppress them. Okay, this is where we got the information. You can see the references. Uh, Silvano or Arietti, Creativity, the Magic Synthesis. Okay, very interesting book. Okay, genius. Let's continue to talk about genius. The four-letter word of the day is food, boys and girls. And what I mean by food is nutriment, sustenance, provision. Okay, poor countries and food. Okay, I got here. I said, I mentioned this before, 36 of the... Uh, of the 40 poorest countries in the world exports food to North America. Okay, and the reason why they export food to North America is it's more profitable to export food even though their country, people in their country are starving. Okay, they make more money exporting the food to the United States because more money is paid for the food and also the food, most of the food that comes here gets thrown away. Either half of it, more than half of it gets thrown away in the supermarkets who knows what percentage, then after people who buy the food, what percentage of it gets thrown away. So most of the food that is imported to the United States gets thrown away. Okay, and, and, and there's people starving in the world. One billion people in the world are starving, boys and girls. In an economic democratic society, there is more than enough food for everybody, for their mind, for their body and mind, because you need food for the mind. You've got to encourage uh, different types of media to encourage ki kids to, to want to develop their, their mind. And in other words, it's cool to like science, to like art. Okay? It's not cool to want to be a gangster, to be a criminal, to exploit people. Okay? It's cool to be creative in science and art. That's what needs to be taught. Because it's the scientists and artists that give us the greatest joys. And the scientists are the ones, you know, to make our lives so much easier. Same with the artists and their creativity. 